Well, we're still not clear whether we'll be taken to court or not. We, what we've got have been called preliminary charges. The uh, General Prosecutor's Office, they're meant to decide then whether it goes to court or whether the case is archived. But that's been the case for the last three months, but we don't have any idea um, when to expect a resolution. My, my passport was taken when I was arrested and it's been along with my, my laptop and my camera. And the, the main thing is that I'm, I'm not allowed to leave the country as well while this um, is going on. You know, I can't travel home to Australia or anywhere else. We're very confident that in, in court we would win, but however improbable that this five to seven years sentence that's been raised as a threat going on in the back of your mind, it kind of undermines your ability to uh, live a normal life. I just wish Bob Carr would take a more active interest in the case. She hasn't responded to any of my friends or family or supporters' requests for information. Even the, the union uh, was only able to get what looked basically like a form letter out of him saying, you know, they can't interfere with the Egyptian uh, legal process. Um, on the other hand, you know, the, the Greens motion by Senator Lee Rhiannon, which was passed in the Senate, calling on the Australian government to make sure due process was followed. From the beginning, this has been a sort of an act of political thuggery. The Australian government should have the, the gonads to speak out on that, and it, as it should have for all the human rights abuses committed by uh, the Egyptian military. There's a silence on that as there is on so many other issues because it's, you know, Washington says to be quiet about it, so we do. In my case is nothing compared to what happened to someone like David Hicks or Mamdou Habib. Mamdou Habib, of course, rendered here or kidnapped here and tortured. He, he alleges Australian, the Australian government's complicity in that and you see the way they handle the case of Julian Assange. They clearly don't hold the rights of the, their citizens as the first priority. Well, the first round of the elections show that the Muslim Brotherhood and remnants of the old regime, the Falul, are still, you know, still able to outcompete the revolutionaries in terms of uh, an electoral process. Uh, the winner by a, a small margin was the Muslim Brotherhood's candidate, uh, Mohammed Morsi, the, and Ahmed Shafiq, who was a PM under Mubarak, actually just appointed at the very last minute. And that looks like it's going to be now a final race between those two, um, which is a huge disappointment for the revolutionaries. There was a left-wing secular candidate called Hamdin Sabahi, didn't have you know the sort of resources and machinery the other time he came in uh, third but he was also competing for the vote with Abu Fatuh, an Islamist who'd split from the Brotherhood towards the moderate side who was also considered a sort of uh, revolutionary candidate those two between them it's been a pooled revolutionary vote they, they would have had a, a clear lead of course many of the revolutionaries boycotted the first round now there's a, a sort of a much stronger call for a, a boycott as well because it's the muslim brotherhood versus the old regime there's been some controversy because some revolutionaries are saying to back the muslim brotherhood at least they're not uh, from the old dictatorship whereas others are saying no this is handing the, they've already got control of the parliament handing them the presidency now as well be handing over too much control at this sort of formative stage uh, most revolutionaries in terms of people who have been you know, active on the streets are still saying the streets is, is, is a battle has to Hamdan Sabahi um, is the founder of the uh, Dignity Party. He was an MP under President Mubarak during the, in the elections in 2005, credited as being one of the, the few sort of voices of resistance in that parliament, apart from those of the Brotherhood. He really ran as the sort of the poor man's candidate. His party is Nasserist, spirit of sort of pan Arab socialism. His platform, you know, was explicitly about wealth redistribution. The, the labor movement as a whole hadn't really sort of emerged on the scene in any sort of political, um, as any sort of political national force. But with the emergence of Sabahi as a strong candidate, this is going to be on the cards in the future. The boycott was, uh, it's hard to know how widely it was observed. One thing that's clear is that turnout was lower than in the parliamentary elections, um, which has been called by some revolutionaries as a victory because they say it means the population is losing faith in sort of SCAF's electoral process. But you could also make the argument that that was simply the result of uh, the Salafi candidate um, disqualified uh, ahead of the poll. So you can imagine that a lot of them were less motivated to come out and vote, not having a, a major Salafi candidate in the race. Now that it's a race between uh, Morsi and uh, Shafiq, you might see a much bigger boycott in, 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 in the second round. There's basically a constant occupation now in Tahrir Square. At the moment, it's got a lot of people protesting. Uh, there were a few hundred there, at least earlier today, uh, protesting the election results because there were allegations of fraud. The square's been pretty much permanently occupied. All throughout 2011, there was um, 
uh, sort of ongoing struggle to, for physical control of the square. The army and the police have pretty much given up on it. Definitely, there is still definitely, you know, real tension on the streets and the possibility of war. What the relationship between the Brotherhood and the military uh, will be like and how that will evolve is difficult to know. I don't think an, an immediate marriage between the Brotherhood and the military about to take place, which we'll see them set up as a stable new ruling elite. Things are really in flux here. There are the established political forces, the Brotherhood and there is the military, but there's this huge sort of uh, chaotic force at work as well of the revolution.